so this video is a continuation of the first part of the video blood pressure in which we saw the terminologies of blood pressure factors influencing the blood pressure variations of blood pressure and some pathological variations in blood pressure but in this video we're going to see about the regulation of blood pressure so regulation of blood pressure we're going to see short term regulation intermediate term regulation and long term regulation so let's get into the video why is arterial pressure supposed to be regulated because there are some pathological and physiological conditions which can alter the blood pressure okay so as we saw in the pre uh, previous video uh, there was a change in posture which caused an immediate change in the blood pressure right so the blood pressure fluctuated at that state so we need some mechanisms to restore the blood pressure to its normal range okay so that is the need of the blood pressure eye regulation okay now how is this blood pressure regulated okay so the blood pressure is being continuously monitored by various receptors or sensors that are being located in our body so when these receptors senses a change in the blood pressure okay so it activates several reflexes that causes immediate response okay that restores the blood pressure that restores the fluctuated blood pressure to the normal value okay now let's see what are the regulatory methods that are being involved here so we have short term regulation intermediate term regulation and long term regulation okay now uh what are the reflexes that come under the short term regulation uh we have baro receptor reflex chemo receptor reflex bain bridge reflex and cushing reflex so this short term regulation is also known as neural regulation as it involves nerves in this type of regulation okay now intermediate regulatory mechanisms are stress relaxation reverse stress relaxation and we also have capillary fluid shift mechanism and in long term regulation uh, we have direct mechanisms body fluid mechanisms indirect mechanisms renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism or rds uh, aldosterone particularly i mean can act separately anti diuretic hormone can act separately we have thirst mechanisms okay so this long term regulation is also known as renal regulation as it mainly involves the kidney okay it mainly involves the regulate i mean regulatory mechanism mainly involves with the kidney okay now we also have hormonal regulation in which hormones come into action to regulate the blood pressure we have the catecholamines uh, atrial natriuretic peptide glucocorticoids and nitric oxide okay now let's get into the topic what is short term regulation so the short term regulation is acute that is it acts suddenly it's a fast acting mechanism okay so it acts within seconds to minutes to regulate the blood pressure okay so it is used to prevent the acute fall or sudden rise in the blood pressure uh, but the thing is it is effective only for few hours okay how does the short term regulation regulate the blood pressure so it influence on the cardiac output and peripheral resistance which which has direct influence on the blood pressure okay now what are the structures that participate in the uh, short term regulation we have the baro receptors chemo receptors medullary centers like vasomotor center cardiovascular center nucleus tracta solitatis and nerves like sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves okay so baro receptors are present in the aortic and the carotid sinus so we have um, yeah one second so we have the uh, carotid sinus here here we have the baro receptor okay and here aortic arch okay so uh, in the aortic arch we have the baro receptor okay these two places are the place where the baro receptors are present okay uh then uh this is the place of aortic body and here we have the carotid body okay now we serve as the chemo receptors okay next we have the uh, i mean uh, vagal center like a uh, vasoconstrictor cardio inhibitor center and aspirator center we have the nucleus tracta solitarius which is present in the brain stem okay uh, which is present laterally and inferiorly to the fourth ventricle yeah okay now what is the reflex as we saw earlier we have the baro receptor reflex chemo receptor reflex cushing reflex and vein reflex right now 
let's see in detail about this barrel receptor reflex. So this barrel receptor reflex is also known as Mary's reflex. Okay, so where are these receptors present? We saw that the barrel receptors are present in the carotid and the aortic sinus, right? So they respond to the mechanical stimuli. So these receptors are mechanical receptors. Okay, so what is these barrel receptors present? They result in carotid sinus reflex and aortic sinus reflex. Okay. Now, this carot in the carotid sinus, the barrel receptors are being innovated by the glossopharyngeal nerve or the ninth cranial nerve, okay, which in turn goes or sends signals to the nucleus tractus solitarius and the barrel receptor reflex starts acting. What is the working rate? That is, when the blood pressure, okay, when the blood pressure lowers than the normal, I mean, this is the systolic blood pressure range. So, when the blood pressure lowers than the normal, what is lower than the normal blood pressure range? It's um, uh, 80, right? So it's 100, right? So 100, below 100, if the blood pressure drops below 100, up to 60 millimeter of mercury, okay? The barrel receptor reflex can, uh, I mean, it can regain or it can restore the blood pressure to normal. And if the blood pressure rises above 140, up to 200 millimeter of mercury, the barrel receptor reflex can restore the blood pressure to normal. Okay, now let's see the reflex. When the blood pressure increases, okay, the barrel receptors are being stimulated. Okay, that in turn causes the stimulation of the nucleus tractus solitarius. Okay, so this nucleus tractus solitarius stimulation results in two things. One is the inhibition of the vasomotor center and the other thing is the stimulation of the cardiovascular center. So the inhibition of the vasomotor center, okay, results in the sympathetic, I mean, it uh, sends signal to the sympathetic nervous system, okay? And the sympathetic nervous system, as it is being inhibited, uh, causes decreased sympathetic tone or it results in decreased sympathetic tone to the blood vessels, okay? And to the adrenal medulla. So when there is decreased sympathetic tone to the blood vessels, it causes vasodilation and venodilation, whereas decreased sympathetic tone to the adrenal medulla results in decreased catecholamine secretion, okay? Now, the stimulation of the cardiovascular center, okay, uh, sends signal to the vagus. It increases the vagal tone in the heart, which in turn increases, I mean, uh, decreases the myocardial contractibility and results in bradycardia. All these things together results in uh, decreased BP or it restores the increased BP to the normal level. Okay. Now, now, when the blood pressure drops below normal, that is when the blood pressure drops below 100, okay, up to 60, it results in inhibition of the barrel receptors, okay? So the nucleus tractus solitaris is not being stimulated here. That results in stimulation of the vasomotor center and the inhibition of the cardiovascular center. Now, if we see here, it's the exact reversal of this, okay? So see here, see, it is inhibition of the vasomotor center here in case the blood pressure increases. That is, the sim, I mean, the ultimately, ultimately, what it leads to is sympathetic tone Catecholamine secretion and the vagal tone are being influenced. Okay, so when the blood pressure increases, what we saw first, when the blood pressure increases, the mechanism, the barrel receptor reflex, leads to decreased sympathetic tone, decreased catecholamine secretion, and increased vagal tone. But when the blood pressure in, uh, decreases, it leads to increased sympathetic tone, increased catecholamine secretion, and decreased vagal tone. That is the ultimate thing here. But the thing is, how does that come into action? Here, the nucleus tractus solitarius stimulate the vasomotor center. So, it sends signal to sympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic tone of the blood vessel is being increased. It causes vasoconstriction and venoconstriction. Okay. When the sympathetic tone to the adrenal medulla increase, it increases the catecholamine secretion. Okay. And when the uh, cardiovascular center is being inhibited uh, by a VMS, the vagal tone is being decreased and uh, in the heart, okay, that leads to tachycardia and increased myocardial contractibility. All these things ultimately leads to increased BP or it restores the BP to normal from decreased BP, okay? Now, let's come to the next reflex. What is that? It's called the chemoreceptor reflex or it's also known as the Mayer's reflex, whereas the Bayer's receptor reflex was called, uh, was called as the Mary's reflex, okay? Now, uh, what are the chemoreceptors here? It's the aortic body and the carotid body. Okay. 
uh, okay as the name indicates the chemoreceptor senses chemicals what are the chemicals here it is the oxygen carbon dioxide and uh, hydrogen ions okay so hypoxia hypercapnia and acidosis are being sensitized or are being uh, sensed by this chemoreceptors what is the working range of this chemoreceptor reflex it's 40 to 100 millimeter of mercury okay now let's see the reflex when the blood pressure drops below 60 millimeter of mercury it results in hypoxia hypercapnia acidosis asapexia okay all these things leads to the stimulation of the chemoreceptor so from this, it is the exact thing of the beta receptor reflex when the BP drops, okay? It causes stimulation of the vasomotor center and inhibition of the cardiovascular center. So the sympathetic tone is being increased, causing vasoconstriction and venoconstriction. The adrenal medulla, the sympathetic tone is increased, resulting in increased catecholamine secretion and increased blood pressure. The vagal tone is decreased, leading to tachycardia and increased myocardial contractibility. All these things collectively leads to increased blood pressure, restoring the blood pressure to normal okay now the next thing is the pushing reflex okay so what initiates the pushing reflex the ischemia of the brain initiates the pushing reflex so it's also known as the cns ischemic response okay so what is the working rate of the pushing reflex okay uh, the 15 to 50 millimeter of mercury that is when the blood pressure is between 15 to 50 millimeter of mercury the pushing reflex come into action okay now Oh, how does Cushing reflex acts when the blood pressure is below 40 mill? I mean, when it drops below 40 millimeter of mercury, cerebral hypoxia, hypercapnia, and asapaxia can occur. Okay, that directly acts on the vasomotor center and it increases the sympathetic. Uh, nervous system okay it increases the action on sympathetic nervous system that it causes intense vasoconstriction resulting in increased blood pressure and reflex tachycardia okay now what is the next one it's the intermediate term regulation okay as the name indicates, it is in between the short term and long term. So it corrects blood pressure within few minutes to half. Okay. So it remains functional only for a few days to few months. How does this intermediate term regulation correct the blood pressure? It influences the circulating blood volume, thus have effect on cardiac output. Okay. And then it influences the blood pressure. Okay. Now, what are the mechanisms? The first thing is the stress relaxation. Okay. So when the blood pressure increases, the blood vessels are being stretched. That causes stress relaxation. Okay. So the stress relaxation causes increased capacity of the vascular blood. That is, this when the blood vessels are being stretched, there is stress relaxation, which ultimately leads to pooling of blood. Okay. So the blood in the circulation is being decreased. So the blood volume is decreased. That decreases the blood pressure. Okay. Now, reverse stress relaxation is exactly the opposite of this. That is, when the blood pressure decreases, the blood vessels are not being stretched. So, the vascular tone is increased. So, the uh, capacity of the vascular blood is being decreased. So, the blood in circulation increases. So, the blood volume increases. And that leads to increased blood pressure. Okay. Now, The next mechanism is fluid shift mechanism. Under this, we have two things. One, when the blood pressure increases, okay? When the blood pressure increases, that causes increase in capillary hydrostatic pressure. So when the capillary hydrostatic pressure increases, more fluid from the capillary enters into the interstitial space. So the blood volume is being decreased. That results in decreased blood pressure. So the exact opposite happens when the blood pressure decreases. The capillary hydrostatic pressure is also being decreased. So the fluid from the interstitial space enters into the capillary. So the blood volume increases and the blood pressure increases. Okay. Now, long-term regulation. So this long-term regulation is slow, but it's very sustainable. Okay. So it takes several days for complete restoration of the blood pressure. Okay. To normal. Uh, so this uh, long-term blood pressure, okay, uh, it can... Uh, stay in action that is uh, it can stay in action for days to years okay but the effectiveness of these mechanisms increase as the time increases okay now how does this long-term regulation influence the blood pressure by influencing the blood volume which influence the cardiac output which in turn influence the blood pressure okay. 
Now we have the renal mechanism here. So when the extracellular fluid increases, okay, that increases the blood pressure. So the renal blood flow is also being increased. So that causes an increased glomerular filtration rate. So when the glomerular filtration rate increases, sodium and uh, water into the urine increases. That results in increased urine formation. So the extracellular volume is being reduced. Okay, that results in decreased blood pressure. So the exact opposite happens when the blood pressure decreases. Yeah. Okay, so when the extracellular fluid drops, the blood pressure decreases, the renal blood flow decreases, that in turn results in decreased glomerular filtration rate. So when the glomerular filtration rate is lowered, sodium and water into the urine is being not, I mean, it's not very, uh, into urine is not being secreted much. So it causes retention of sodium and water. Yeah, that leads to decreased urine formation. That leads to increased ECF volume, extracellular volume, uh, ultimately leading to increased blood pressure. Okay, now the next mechanism is renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism. So, liver secretes angiotensinogen. Okay, so uh, when the blood pressure drops, okay, the, I mean, uh, the kidney secretes renin. So, what stimulates the renin secretion when the blood pressure drops? or when sodium de delivery to the macula denser of the juxtaglomerular apparatus of the kidney decreases, or when the sympathetic tonus decreases, all these things leads to renin secretion. So this renin converts angiotensin -ogen to angiotensin 1. Okay, so this angiotensin 1 is converted into angiotensin 2 with the help of angiotensin converting enzymes that is being secreted from the lungs and the kidney. Okay, now, what is this angiotensin 2 does? It ultimately increases the blood pressure, okay, by acting on various places. So when it acts on kidney, it constricts the glomerular efferent arterial, okay, and it increases the sodium and hydrogen, I mean, it increases the sodium hydrogen exchange activity, okay. And in posterior pituitary gland, it increases the uh, antidiuretic hormone secretion. In the vascular smooth muscle, it causes, I mean, when it acts on vascular smooth muscle, it contracts this vascular smooth muscle, causing vasoconstriction, leading to hypertension. In the hypothalamus, it leads to thirst, okay? And then uh, in the adrenal cortex, it leads to aldosterone secretion. So we'll see the action of antidiuretic hormone and aldosterone in the hormonal regulations, okay? Now, hormonal regulation. When we see in hormonal regulation, the first thing we have is the catecholamines, okay? Under catecholamines, we have epinephrine and norepinephrine, okay? These are being secreted by the adrenal medulla when the blood pressure falls, okay? Uh, so these increases the blood pressure by acting on the heart and the uh, blood vessels okay so next we have the aldosterone okay so aldosterone is stimulated when the blood pressure drops okay so what is this aldosterone cause this causes sodium and water retention increasing the ecf volume increasing the blood volume increasing the blood pressure okay the next thing is the antidiuretic hormone so this antidiuretic hormone causes vasoconstriction and increases the peripheral resistance, which in turn leads to increased blood pressure. Okay. Now, what is this atrial natriuretic peptide does? So this uh, atrial natriuretic peptide facilitates the sodium and water excretion, thus decreasing the blood pressure when the blood pressure increases. Okay. The next thing is the glucocorticoids. Okay. So this glucocorticoids increase the blood pressure. Okay. Corticoids like cortisol and corticosterone, these things increases the blood pressure. Okay. The next thing is the nitric oxide that is being secreted by the endothelium. So this results in vasodilatation results in decreased blood pressure. Okay. So when blood pressure is, I mean, when nitric oxide is being released, okay, that results in decreased blood pressure. Okay. So when nitric oxide synthesis is being inhibited, that results in increased blood pressure. Okay. So this is seen in case of uh, elder age or old age, okay? So this nitric oxide is also an important cause uh, for uh, old age people to occur hypertension. With that, we complete this lecture. Thank you.